Hi, this is Eve Star of Eve Star Fiber Arts and of the Chalet Millet. Tuesday afternoon, April 24th, 2018. And I've been ready and waiting for Nick to come get me. Do some things in town and call on some people. So I thought I'd give you a quick update. This is the Solomon seal that I planted last fall. It's an unusual plant if you've never seen it. It's really big. I'd say this is going on three feet tall now. And it produces these little olive-like uh, berries. And then they, they go from green to like a dark purple. And I just replanted them last fall just to see if they'd come up from that. And they did. So there they are. And then we've got our columbines coming along and the last of the wood violets. And the echinaceas are up and ready. And I used to pull these out. I didn't know what they were because they're kind of ratty looking at first. So I've learned that lesson. And then over here, I transplanted some sunflowers that I started in the greenhouse. And I'm hoping that we're past all danger of frost. It's been such a late, crazy spring. You can't count on anything. And these are some more that I just stuck in there. And some marigolds and some cosmos getting rolling. But look at that sky. Ah, isn't it lovely? It is just as clear and beautiful and perfect as can be. As nasty as it was yesterday, cold and gray, it's just perfect today. And all of our trees are leafing out. And they're going to cover the, the dead ones. Although I thought this one was dead and it's not. So these are coming along well. We've got a nice old pine tree with the cedar right next to it. And down there is the weeping willow neck planted. Now let me pause and I'll, I'll go show you that one up close. Okay, this is a slightly different angle of our property than you've seen for a while. This is the old, old stagecoach road that cuts across the side of the mountain that everybody shares. And uh, before this was even the Dillard's property, it was a wagon trail and then the stagecoaches used it. And now it's ours. But here is the willow that Nick bought as a little baby stick less than two years ago. And it is getting big. And it's in a terrific spot. Willows take up a ton of water, which is why you often see them near um, little ponds and things. And if you can see how wet this is, it stays wet right here most of the summer. So we purposely planted this here to help soak up some of that moisture. I think our friend Kenny was telling us that. He's a, he's a native, or at least he's lived here forever, so. He and his wife Jane know a lot about n native plants, and right now I'm walking in wet. All of this is wet. So we could use a couple more willows along here. But that over there is a, a neat little um, outdoor kind of a pergola that the same carpenter who built our house built behind the house next door, because they built that one as well. So everything is filling in and just getting gorgeous. Let's go the girls, shall we? I thought I'd stop and show you these on the way. I transplanted these just last week. These are native buttercups, and I pulled the whole... They grow in like one big tree almost at the bottom. And I yanked them out of our pond, or not our pond, our stream, our drainage stream, so that Nick wouldn't toss them away. And I replanted them here, where we have a lot of drainage anyway. They seem to like it where it's really wet. So they're doing terrifically well. I'm very pleased that that worked out. And then over here we've got uh, not a lot to look at from a video perspective, I suppose, but we've got iris is just about to burst on open. A lot more than last year because I hacked back a lot of the growth of the big bushes that were blocking everything. It was hard to do at the time, you know, like pruning is so difficult. Now here, we have tons and tons more peonies than we've had before. We've had like one, one bloom. And here we've got at least, I'd say 20 ready to go. And you know how they have those funny ants in there and the wasps and things, but they're doing extremely well. 
I'm very pleased about that. Because I didn't know how to collect seed for the peonies, so I was hoping they'd come back up if I gave them some more space by ripping stuff out around them. Now these are all going to be day lilies here on the edge. And those are some bigger ones behind where the deer keeps laying. And then these are tiger lilies, and they get to be up taller than my head. And they, they turn out just beautiful. Now this is a scarf, upcoming scarf. Um, I've been doing a series of Ozark songbirds right now. But this will be my flora, you know, the trees and the, the flowers and things. And since I pruned these, they look a lot better too. Now, at first I thought that they're Japanese maples, but they're not that dwarf, tiny size that we had in Oregon. So maybe they're just red maples. I don't know. Anybody knows? Give me a holler. Now down here, we've got this beautiful ground cover that really takes over, and I've had to rip a lot of it out in the past, but it's got these really pretty, simple, five-petal, purplish-blue-violet flowers on them. So if anybody knows what they are, let me know. And these deals are coming up. I'm not sure what these are yet either, because they didn't come up before. Because again, the big bushes crowded them out, so that'll be a surprise. And I kind of overdid it with the Rose of Sharon. I really went crazy cutting those, so hopefully they'll come screaming back. They were taking over everything. But we've got so many little animal homes in the middle here. If you start walking through there, there's all these big, deep holes. Where I don't know if the bunnies live there. They hop there when we, we startled them. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of there. The armadillos dig in there, but I don't think they live there. I think they live in the woods. Hey, hang on, let's go see the girls. Now the girls are a little bit annoyed because it's sunny and beautiful and they want to come outside. They don't know why they can't just ramble and forage all by themselves. What's the big deal? But we live in a place that is just loaded with predators and these girls are kind of low on the food chain, huh? Don't know how well you can see them through the mesh. Yes, I know, dears. You want to go out. And of course, all this is filling in too. You can see some dogwoods and where the bluebirds live over there. Boy, we've been spotting a lot of gorgeous birds too. I'll give you a slow pan to wrap up with. You don't see this part of the property as much because I'm on the deck a lot when I'm taking videos. Sorry, I feel the wind kicking up. That means it's gonna be blowing into the microphone. But look at my woods. They're getting all woodsy. Pretty soon you won't be able to see very far. I was just looking at a bunch of goldfinches over here. We have so many songbirds. Been looking at indigo buntings and goldfinches, all the kinds of little chickadees and wrens. Now here we've got a small dogwood. Nick pulled a bunch of uh, strangly vines out of this one, so it finally bloomed this year. Do a little zoom there. See if I can look at the right thing. There we go. You can see them a little bit. Some of the last dogwood blooms throughout uh, all of Mountain View, and I'm sure lots of places this year because of the timing of the winter and the rains. We've had just dogwoods galore. We had some kind of weird looking little trees. You can see the trunk of that dogwood kind of zigzags and kind of wiggly. They are skinny and they will go as high as they need to get to get some sun. So they don't look like much when they're not blooming. So I've learned not to hack them down. Hold on one more sec. We'll wrap this up. Just wanted to show you a close up of this beautiful, natural, just kind of a, a fungi, I suppose. Because it grows in little flakes down there. But I use a mixture of colors that I paint to put on pine cones and other things to get that effect. And it might seem like what I'm doing is too blue, but as you can see, it's very blue. And it's a neat combination of colors. Let's just stroll over here to finish up and look at one of my, my pine trees. This isn't one of our very oldest ones. We've got some venerable ancient pines. 
So we'll take a slow pan on up here to finish up this video. So as I'm going up and up and look at this old pine tree and the sun filtering through, I hope you've enjoyed this little ramble around the property on this beautiful, perfect spring early afternoon. I'm waiting for the hubs to come pick me up so I can get some service in. So, this is Eve Star Malay from the Chalet Malay bringing you our pond full of little perch. And we will see y'all soon.